Dublin. Irish voters will decide this week whether to repeal the Eighth Amendment to their constitution, which protects the right of both a mother and her unborn child. If it's repealed, as polling suggests it will be, some fear it could open the way to abortion on demand. The Irish passed the Eighth Amendment because they didn't want Ireland to experience what had happened in the United States with Roe v. Wade, when a court decided that abortion on demand should be legal. But Ireland has been undergoing sweeping social change. In 2015, Ireland became the first country to legalize gay marriage by popular vote. Its Taoiseach, or Prime Minister, is openly gay. And Leo Varadkar backs repeal of the Eighth Amendment along with much of the Irish establishment and media. In Ireland today, if the woman sitting next to you is pregnant, she does not have full rights over her own body. Tonight, everything you need to know ahead of next week's referendum on the Eighth Amendment. But repeal's lead has been shrinking, and Facebook and Google have sealed off the nation to any foreign advertising about the referendum in what looks to pro-lifers as a way to make sure the repeal or yes camp wins. It's very significant that yes campaigners rushed out today to welcome this censorship of the no message. Was it because the polls are tightening? Was it because it looks like this referendum, which is absolutely supported by the media establishment and the political establishment, is going to be rejected by the people? Irish pro-life leader Neve Uvreem describes an uphill battle against most of the nation's press and politicians. The bias is off the charts. The role of the media in this has been to wholeheartedly campaign for abortion. Saying to Irish women, you're not safe without abortion, your health isn't safe, your lives might be in danger. Women need abortion in order to have full and safe lives, and in order to be equal in society. And when you look at the facts, of course, this is entirely untrue. As a doctor, I would say abortion is not predominantly a medical issue. Dr. John Kehoe is a general practitioner. While many doctors have said they support repeal of the Eighth Amendment for the safety and health of women, Kehoe says women don't need a change in the law to be safer. This is not a medical debate, in my opinion, first and foremost. This is a social debate, and this is a, this is a debate about choice, and this is a debate on my, from my point of view, this is a debate, about, a debate about human rights, the right to life. The repeal side says it's absolutely about the health and safety of women. But whether an abortion is ever necessary to save a woman's life is in dispute. Because if there is a serious complication, a doctor can attempt to deliver the baby early alive. Another issue is the Irish women who are already traveling to Britain for an abortion or are taking the abortion pill illegally. I think the laws that we have in Ireland uh, are far too restrictive. Uh, nine, ten women every day travel to the United Kingdom to end their pregnancies. And increasingly women are buying uh, pills over the internet uh, and taking them at home. So uh, that uh, is actually quite a dangerous situation. Let's look at the facts. And the facts show us this, that women are safe in Ireland. They're much safer here than they are in the United States, where abortion is widely available. So women are safe without abortion. Any care they need during pregnancy, any interventions they need during pregnancy are given to them under Irish law. The other issue is abortion for instances of fetal abnormalities. The Yes Camp says women suffer psychologically when they're forced to carry a child to term that is going to die. There was no way I could continue for another 28 weeks, potentially, you know, knowing that there was no baby. If there was a baby at the end of it, was going to survive. Women in cases like these who want an abortion must fly to Britain. And I'd like to welcome up Vicky Wall to the stage. When Vicky Wall learned the girl she was carrying suffered from trisomy 18 and would die in her womb, she was told by a medical expert her only option was to travel to Britain to have an abortion. She made another choice. What message would I have sent my other children that their little sister was sick? So I was just going to end things quicker. Vicky decided to take time off work to love and enjoy her daughter, Leaden in the last days before her death. We spent the summer hanging out with her, going to the beach with her, loving her, taking pictures, talking to her constantly, reading her Dr. Seuss stories. And she reacted to, to our voices. And we loved our time with her and we valued our time with her. And I got a very bad pain and Leaden never kicked again. That sounds very tragic and sad, and it is. But Leiden died at home, surrounded by love, and her brother and her sister and her dad and my friend. And 
it was very dignified for her. We went on then to deliver Leiden. And when she came out, she looked just perfect. She didn't look like she was sick at all. We got to bring her home in her little Moses basket. We drove her home and everybody came to see her, all her family. If I had aborted Leiden, I couldn't be sitting here talking about her now. I would have ended her life and she would have become a secret not to be talked about. The healing I have from telling her story and knowing that I gave her every chance to live her short life, that's what healed our broken heart. Vicki Wall believes she received better prenatal care because abortion was not a legal option. But now the right to life in Ireland is in serious jeopardy. And if the Eighth Amendment is repealed, Ireland will certainly never be the same. Dale Hurd, CBN News, Dublin.